Good evening, class of 2022, and congratulations. I would like to formally welcome you to College of the Siskiyou's 63rd graduation ceremony. You have conquered tremendous challenges to be here, and all of us commend you for your determination and dedication. This experience has also made you stronger and more resilient. So my one piece of advice to you today, as you engage in the next step of your journey, is to continue to challenge yourself, as this will allow you to grow to your full potential. Again, congratulations. We are so very proud of you. I would now like to introduce our current board president, Barry Olin, who has been serving on the board She's short, <laughs> but she's great. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and graduates. My name is Barry Olin. I am the president of the board of trustees for College of the Sisters. Students, you have spent all of your life learning and being taught, and now it's time, now you have some degree of knowledge. You may think that you are nearly done learning, but from my experience, I believe that you're only just getting started. The possibilities and directions of this life are vast, and the decisions that you make in the early part of your life will determine much of your outcome later. There will be crossroads in your life, and you will make decisions which road to take. You are much smarter now, so instead of being led by others, consider placing your own future. And remember that life is continually changing. Now, remember, graduates, that an investment in knowledge pays the best dividends. This college has a board of trustees that work very hard behind the scenes and may each bring a very special talent that helps the college succeed. And there are some awesome projects awaiting us just around the corner. At this time, I would like to introduce your elected board of trustees. And if you will stand after I call your name, Trustee Carol Cup, representing the Weed and Lake Shastina area. <laughs> Trustee Erica Mitchell, representing the Down River and Happy Camp area. <laughs> Trustee Greg Hamm is not here with us tonight, but he represents the Scott Valley area. Trustee Kevin Dalton, representing the McLeod and Dungeoneer area. <laughs> Trustee and Vice President of the Board, Kathy Coon, representing the Montague and all the way to Tule Lake area. Wow. <laughs> Trustee Debbie Derby, representing the Mount Shasta area. And, <laughs> and I represent the Wairika area. Thank you all for coming. Yes. 
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the class of 2022, I'd like to welcome family, friends, staff, alumni, faculty, and my fellow graduates. Many of us drift through life performing our day-to-day -day tasks until we reach a point and look back on what we've done and didn't do. Dreams don't have an end date, an expiration. So today, we gather here to celebrate those dreams and what's to come. I'm excited to be here to talk about our experiences how we work through this terrible pandemic, and how we will continue on our path to success. We've all taken some gen ed. You know, math might have been your thing, but whoever decided to introduce letters and Greek symbols into statistics, it's my least favorite person. <laughs> Does anybody remember US history? Me neither. But the point is, we've all had experiences in the moment that were difficult, and that's OK. One of those diff uh, difficult experiences may have been changing majors. What a great place to do it with tuition, unlike Stanford's that cost the price of two 2022 Toyota Corollas a semester. <laughs> Out of curiosity, how many graduates are in the first major they decided on? Ah, stubborn. For my first major, I want to do computer science. Then I sat down at a desk all day and tried to fix one issue in some code and as anybody who's trying to do this knows, if you try to fix one syntax issue, it just creates two. For my second, I decided music was the thing for me. Then I learned about music theory, and the moment I heard the word theory, I was out. You could have also very well ended up like I did, where one of those gen ed classes randomly ended you up with a double major in communication studies. Uh, another thing we've all probably experienced is waiting on those assignments. How many of us have procrastinated before? For those of you who have their hands down, you can have nothing to do but chilling on a lake when you hear a little sound in your head. And the closer you get to that assignment, the louder that voice gets. Until one day you just lock it in the closet, throw away the key, until it bursts out of the, do the door on the due date of that assignment and starts screaming at you. Anyone else? Just me? Good to know. Well, I'm so glad to have been able to share these experiences with my fellow graduates. COVID. Sorry, I thought the World Health Organization was going to burst on the field and tackle me right here. When I was younger, I had aspirations of sitting in a college-level class and interacting with teachers like I'd seen on TV so many times before. I did, but you get the point. But you know what I did imagine is sitting at home, bobbing my head at my computer screen, doing my best to stay awake. Or sitting in my bed, in my PJs, spilling an entire bowl of Lucky Charms on myself, laptop, and cat. She still hasn't forgiven me. But in all honesty, this pandemic has made school harder. It has affected everyone in one way or another. We lost our fire coordinator, Chief Mike Wilson, in a tragedy just before the semester. And as he liked to be called for his awesome mustache, rest in peace, Mr. Lorax, you will be missed. The pandemic has made life difficult, no doubt, but you graduates beat it, and that's impressive. So keep working hard and doing what you do best. Succeed. The future is built by those who follow their dreams. For some of you, completing this associate's degree can mean many things. For those of you that decided to enter the workforce, congratulations to you and your employer. Those who decided to end their educational career, congratulations on achieving that goal. And those who are using this to continue their education, congratulations and good luck. That quote by Eleanor Roosevelt, it means so much. It means to better yourself. And most importantly, it means to dream big and do everything you can to achieve your goals. When I say better yourself, I mean do everything in your power to build yourself and others up. From making yourself physically healthier, to reading a book and learning a new skill, to simply going on a walk to clear your head. It is so important to continue to work on yourself because what is life when you stop growing? And when I say work towards your goals, I mean first determine what those goals are. You might want to be a millionaire. Me too. I'm sure that's a dream many of us share. But what does it take to actually get there? What are the steps you need to actually take to achieve that dream? Figure them out, write them down, and make a plan. And when it all comes together, you look back on the dids and dids nots of your life, and you'll be happy with what you see, especially with that cool million. 
So let's take a look back on what we've experienced in school and be proud of what we've accomplished. From those tough classes to the pandemic we beat, remember what you're battling for. The future is built by those who follow their dreams, and that future is going to be built by those graduates who work so hard right in front of me. So congratulations, class of 2022, and thank you to all of those who helped us get here. So Jim's sorry that he couldn't be here tonight, but he wanted me to say thank you to all of the staff, the students, and the faculty. And he asked me to thank the Faculty Association for all of the love and support and for making it an enjoyable ride. He thanks you. Okay, at this time, I would like to ask all the emeritus faculty present to stand. Do we have any? Emeritus faculty here. Oh, wonderful. Thank you for being here today. And also to the alumni, we recognize that many of you who are here today are alumni of the college. If you have received a certificate or degree from College of the Siskiyous, please stand and be recognized. to recognize all of our veteran students as well as veterans in the audience. Veterans, if you can please stand. Thank you. We commend you for your service. If you are a Siskiyou Promise student, please stand. Thank you, Promise students, for taking the important step in advancing your education. 
Scholar athletes, I would now like to ask all scholar athletes to stand. Yeah. Yeah. Huge kudos for your accomplishments. We are very proud of you. Okay, before we begin conferring degrees to our 2022 graduates, it is our privilege to present to you students who have earned academic distinction during their tenure as a student at College of Syracuse. Students graduating with honors and highest honors are noted in the program. Graduates who earn a cumulative grade point average, GPA of 3.5 to 3.74, are recognized as graduating with honors. These students are wearing silver honor cords. Highest honors is a distinction presented to associate degree and technical certificate candidates and who have earned a cumulative GPA of 3.75 to 4.0, the highest possible GPA a student can obtain. These students are wearing gold cords to indicate the honor. Students graduating this afternoon who are members of the International Honor Society, Phi Theta Kappa, are wearing gold stoles on the shoulders of their gowns. I have been notified that some PTK students may not have received their yellow stoles, but please stand when informed. Will all the graduates who are being recognized as graduating with highest honors and honors please stand? for 14 years in the TRIO department. She started as a resident advisor with Upward Bound in 2005 and played women's basketball in 2003 to 2004 and 2004 to 2005. While working in the counseling department and as a student leader, Steph enjoyed interacting with students and staff. She transferred to Chico State in 2006 as a Ford Family Scholar. While earning her degree, she was also a resident advisor in Whitney Hall. Steph holds an Associate of Arts in General Education from College of the Siskiyous, a Bachelor's of Science in Recreation Administration from Chico State, and a Master's of Arts in Educational Leadership from Western Governors University. She is currently working on her Associate's Degree in Fire and Science at College of the Siskiyous. Please join me in welcoming Stephanie Roden. Hello, everybody. Oh, I'm loud. <laughs> Siskiyous, what's that? After completing my second year at COS, I went back home for a quick visit before I started my summer job. I ran into two of my high school classmates waiting for my fish to fry at the Salon Shopping Center. I had to, I had to get it. <laughs> I was wearing my Siskiyou Scholar Athlete shirt at the time, and I was explaining to my friends where we California actually was. Was that humble? No, nope. not humble. Siskiyou means opportunity. By the end of my junior year of high school, my family was homeless, I was 20 credits short of being a senior, and not considering college. What I did know was that I wanted change. With that in mind, I asked my dad to buy me a Greyhound ticket, and my parents sent me off, of, uh, they sent me off, they just. <laughs> It was really, honestly, very heartwarming. My dad packed me, a, you know, some fresh fried chicken. My mom, you know, sent me with all the essentials. <clears throat> but upon my arrival, my sinuses cleared, and I felt at home. Siskiyous welcomed me with open arms. Now that I look back on it, my experience was of getting registered for classes and setting up my dorm room was kind of similar to the scene in Beauty and the Beast during Phil's first nights. 
in the past. <laughs> Martha Gentry was my Lumiere. <coughs> you know, the campus city, you know. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure she did the whole song and dance with the dancing plates and the whole, the whole thing. I, I'm fairly certain of that. I just, it was, it was definitely a very heartwarming experience for me, for sure. I was introduced to so much that I felt rejuvenated, empowered, and nurtured in a completely new environment. I felt invested in it. Si se puede is what I was told at the beginning, middle, and every, at the end of every semester. With that, I became more and more involved with the campus. Student leader, student trustee, BSU, ASB, student worker, scholar athlete. Before I knew it, Dr. Sunny Green called me in her office and said, it's time. To petition, yay! We're like, oh, okay. <laughs> and then a year later, Megan Witherell made an appointment for me to complete my on-site admission to Chico State. Siskiyou's is here, oh, sorry. It was here at Siskiyou's where I was able to understand my potential. It was here at Siskiyou's where I was able to create my path for my family and myself. It is Siskiyou's that I will always have a special remembrance in my heart. Any other alumni, wave to me out there. Graduates, look around you. They already stood up, so I'm not gonna make them stand up again. Your village is here today, celebrating you. I see so much perseverance and community among us. With the past four semesters, we have shared and supported each other through these trying times. I am impressed with you all and honored to be standing with you here today. I hope that your time with Siskiyou's has been an opportunity for you too. As we celebrate, embrace these accomplishments and give yourselves a big old hug. We are all so proud of you and we wish you good fortune on your next journey. And as my friend Dory would say, just keep swimming. Congratulations, class of 2022, 2021, and possibly 2024. Thank you, Steph. I'm now excited to introduce to you our keynote guest speaker. Robert, or known as Robbie Burns, is a wildland firefighter, professional snowboarder, and speaker. The youngest of three children of Mike and Donna Burns, he was born and raised in the small mountain town of Mount Chasta, California. Everybody knows where that is. It was here that his passion for alpine snowboarding began at a young age. Burns attended college at the University of Idaho, where he studied natural resources, gaining two bachelor's of science degrees in forest resources and wildland fire ecology. While his passion for snowboarding continued to grow, Burns chose wildland firefighting as a career and currently works as a senior firefighter for the U.S. Forest Service on the Shasta Lake Hotshots, a highly skilled 20-man hand crew that responds to wildfire and other natural disasters throughout the United States and other countries in times of great need. Over the last decade, Robbie has used his firefighting in the summer as cross-training for pursuing a career in professional alpine snowboarding. Over the course of his career as a snowboarder, Burns has collected two collegiate national championships, three U.S. national snowboard championships, and was ranked in the top 20 in the world for his discipline of parallel giant slalom alpine snowboarding. He is recognized as a two-time All-American and in February of 2022, was named to the U.S. Olympic team. 
competing in Beijing, China. Burns spends his time in Northern California with family, cherishing the time he gets with two nieces and five nephews. In addition to snowboarding, he enjoys running, hiking, fishing, golfing, and other activities that the North State has to offer. Please join me in welcoming Robbie Burns. Thank you, Dr. Perlis. Good evening and hello, ladies and gentlemen, faculty, staff, class of 2022. You know, there's considerably more people here than I had uh, originally anticipated. But I guess that's kind of a good problem to have, right? And it's probably good not to walk over the fact that for the last three years, we've been uh, enduring a pandemic together. And now, for the first time for some, um, you know, we're, we're finally back outside. We're finally back in community. And I think that's pretty special. When College of the Siskiyous reached out for me to be the keynote speaker at this graduation, I was honored and admittedly very excited. And then I read the guidelines for the speech. My gaze widened and uh, I took a big gulp in when I read a particular sentence. Uh, Please only speak for five to eight minutes. So I thought to myself, how do I condense a story, my story, filled with trial and error, full of important context and plenty of noteworthy learning experiences into five to eight minutes? You know, there's a, there's a big difference between speaking and sharing. And I can share my story and under the right conditions with maybe a wee bit more time. Uh, it might be a powerful learning experience for some, maybe for all. Most people, I think, are uh, pretty good at talking about themselves. We're the authors of our own stories, and we know them quite well, and we can usually share them in profound ways. But ask a person to share about what they've learned, or maybe about a specific subject matter, and the room, the room usually gets quiet pretty fast. So I'll add a personal goal to the rest of this, to speak less about myself, and hopefully more about what I've had the opportunity to learn in becoming who I am today. As you know, my name is Robbie Burns. I was born and raised in Mount Shasta, California, just over those hills. I grew up pretty average, loved by a wonderful family, and blessed with the opportunity to grow, play, and learn in a relatively safe environment. I was raised to dream, unbounded by the constraints of the world around me. And whether that was planned or not, it was ingrained. I've been blessed to experience and learn from many things, some painfully hard, and others beautiful and breathtaking. I've seen the inner workings of abuse, depression, dependence, and anxiety firsthand. I've also gotten to travel the world, to learn some new languages, and pursue my deepest passion, snowboarding professionally. My newest title is Olympian, a title I wouldn't have had the opportunity to claim if it hadn't have been for many, and the love and kindness and support that they showed me from the small neighboring communities in Siskiyou County. How can I? What can I really share with you guys that hasn't already been shared eloquently before? It's my hope that I can share with you a few of the more important pieces of knowledge I've gained along my journey. And I think there's no better place to start than with time. There's no time more powerful than right now. Did you get that? Really, guys, there's no time in your life more powerful than right now. And not just because I was speaking to you if you were graduating. You can always learn from the past, but please, try not to dwell there. Look to your future, plan well, but don't live there either. This is our time, right here and right now. What you choose to do with your time is vitally important, not just for yourself, not just for those around you, your family and your loved ones, but even to people that you have not yet met. And as you continue forward, I don't think time is going to slow down. I think it will speed up. Of all the ways you can use your time, I've found that enjoying the sunshine, the outdoors, and physical exercise have proven the most consistent and common denominators in my own health and wellness. When you find yourself truly, truly wanting something, I believe consistency the most common denominator of success in any situation you encounter. I find it vitally important 
and ask all of you to follow your dreams to the ends of the earth and be willing to work for it. If you truly desire something, you will know it by the work you're willing to put into it. And the dreams you do have, those dreams, they can become goals when and if they're met with a plan. I think it's important to know that none of this will work without a key ingredient. Taking the time to figure out what is your why. You know, I've hated this question for most of my adult life, mostly because of a fundamental misunderstanding of how to figure out what my why is. But yes, class of 2022, I'm serious. It's, it's not a joke. If you want to grow and come closer to knowing your true identity, you need to practice over and over again in your daily life uncovering your why. When you can connect to this powerful well of energy, you will uncover possibility in every corner of life where you choose to look. Knowing why you're doing something is oftentimes more important than fully understanding what it is you're doing. What you do is not going to be defined in the mundane, but rather in the thick of it. Right here in the hardest moments of your life, when you're feeling down and out, as if nothing will be able to bring you back up, this is when you must turn towards hard work, double down on your consistency, acknowledge your pain, and keep your head held high. What you choose to do with your time consistently will become habit. Your habit will define you. What defines you will shape the trajectory of your life. Please, see clearly how this day, right here and right now, this is, uh, this is gonna change the trajectory of your life. None of us get to know where you're gonna go, how far you'll go, and, and where you're gonna end up in a few years. But I can guarantee you this day will change your life, maybe not immediately, but eventually. <coughs> It's important to know that the work you choose to do every day will change you. When choosing how to use your time, choose to endeavor yourself in tasks that will not only benefit yourself, but the world around you. I listened to a podcast recently that suggested the future leaders of this world will need to be optimists. You see, the landscape is changing. We're not always gonna see our problems marching in from miles in the distance. Both personally and collectively, we must look to the indicators all around us, suggesting the sudden needs for change. Class of 2022, I believe we have many challenges ahead of us, some seen and some unseen. It will take all of us working together to create tangible solutions to fast approaching problems. I ask you to use your time to go out and find good endeavors. Use your time to go out and find ways to get back to your communities. And before you spread anything else, please consider using your time to spread kindness, unapologetically. There's definitely going to be times along the way to uh, puff up your chest and beat on it like a drum. Today is, today is one of those days for you guys. And there's also going to be other times to uh, take a deep breath, step back, and acknowledge your shortcomings and your failures. Yeah, over the course of our time here, and remember this is our time, there are going to be many failures, more than I or you want to count. But if you continue trying and if you keep going, I can guarantee you they will always lead you to your next success. Before you invest in anything else, Please invest in yourself, and I'm not talking about a shopping spree after this is over. Learn about yourself, your strengths, your weaknesses, your likes, your dislikes, your patterns, your purpose. I'd like to leave you guys with words much more powerful than mine. See, I, uh, I love these words that we get to use. And it's my hope that in some small way today, and moving forward in my life, I can use words to maybe help you and others uncover their own meaning in life. That's my why. This, uh, this poem, it's called, uh, it's called The Journey, The Journey by Mary Oliver. So one day, one day you finally knew what you had to do and began. Though the voices all around you kept shouting their bad advice, and though the whole house began to tremble, and you felt the old familiar tug at your ankles, 
Mend my life, each voice cried. But you didn't stop, because you knew what you had to do. And though the wind pried with its stiff fingers at the very foundation, and though their melancholy was terrible, it was already late enough in a wild night, and the road full of fallen branches and stones. But little by little, as you left their voice behind, the stars began to burn through the strips of clouds. And you heard a new voice, one you slowly came to recognize as your own, that kept you company as you strode deeper and deeper into the world, determined to do the only thing you could do, determined to save the only life you could save. I really know no better way to show up to life than with hard work, consistency, and a positive attitude most of the time. And I tell you what, it, it, it's going to be a journey. I was, uh, I was just a kid. I was just uh, another kid from a small town in Northern California. And uh, nobody, nobody looked at me and said, oh, you know, that, that one right there, that one right there is going to go somewhere. He's going to figure things out, and he's going to be somewhere someday. But at the same time, nobody around me, nobody in this county, nobody here, none of my mentors or my coaches or my teachers told me that I couldn't do whatever I wanted to. Nobody told me not to dream, and nobody told me not to fight for my dreams. So that's what I did. I fought for it. I went out and I worked hard, harder than I really knew that I could, and longer than I thought I could. And I think if nothing else, I've come here today to tell all of you that the world is yours. You can step forward from this day and go in any direction that you choose. Whatever you set your sights on can be accomplished. It will be harder than you can imagine right now, and it will take longer than you can expect right now. But you're capable beyond imagination and you hold value beyond anyone's measure. So go get yours. Work hard to uncover your why, be consistent, and use your time to find the path that offers each of you the opportunity to be the most authentic versions of yourself that you possibly can be. I look forward to seeing what you do, where you go, the lives you may change, and the different endeavors you all will surely take on. Enjoy this day and go forth boldly. Congratulations, class of 2022. Thank you. Thank you, Robbie. We have now come to the moment you've been waiting for, the conferring of degrees and certificates. At this time, I'd like to introduce our Academic Senate Vice President, Neil Carpentier Alting. Woo! <laughs> Dr. Perlis, on behalf of the faculty at the College of the Siskiyous, I present to you the candidates for certificates of proficiency, technical certificates, and associate degrees. These candidates have all successfully completed the necessary requirements for one or more of the college's certificates or degrees set forth by the college faculty. The Office of Academic Affairs and the College Board of Trustees and the California Community College Chancellor's Office. The candidates are now prepared for you to confer these awards. By virtue of the power vested in me by the Board of Trustees and by the authority granted to me as Superintendent of the Siskiyou Joint Community College District and as President of College of the Siskiyous, I declare that each of you shall have presented the Certificate of Proficiency, Technical Certificate, and or Associate Degree for which you have qualified and do hereby confer upon each of you the rights, honors, privileges, and responsibilities thereunto appertaining. Congratulations.
Rita Moore, AA in the Liberal Arts and Sciences, Emphasis in Humanities. Marie Lipscomb, AA in Administration of Justice. Gerald Bonner Churchill, AS in Liberal Arts and Sciences, Emphasis in Natural Science. Heidi A. Carlson, AS in Liberal Arts and Sciences, Emphasis in Natural Science. Zachary Hunt Hayden, AA in Liberal Arts and Sciences, Emphasis in Social Sciences. Elizabeth Marie Keene, AA in Communication Studies. Everett Montoya Barrera, AA in Liberal Arts and Sciences, Emphasis in Humanities, AA in Theater, Arts for Transfer. Samantha Michelle Carol White, AA in Liberal Arts and Sciences, Emphasis in Social Sciences, AA in Psychology. Catherine Finwall Perry, AA in Liberal Arts and Sciences, Emphasis in Social Sciences. Abigail Catherine Tower, AA in Liberal Arts and Sciences, Emphasis in Social Sciences. Stella Michelle Lemon, AA in Business Administration, AA in Accounting. Ezekiel Ian Buchert, AS in Liberal Arts and Sciences, with emphasis in Natural Sciences. Miranda Nicole Vasquez Adamant, AA in Liberal Arts and Sciences, emphasis in Social Sciences. Kalisa Marie Moore, AS in Liberal Arts and Sciences, Emphasis in Natural Sciences. Crystal Fahey, AA in Liberal Arts and Sciences, Emphasis in Social Sciences. Megan Marie McCabe, AA in Early Childhood Education. Jason Matthew Scroggins, AA in Psychology, AA in Liberal Arts and Sciences, an emphasis in Social Sciences, and an AA in Sociology for Transfer. <clears throat> Chelsea Dawn Gertman, AA in Early Childhood Education, AS in Early Childhood Education for Transfer.
Christian Pesch. In Elias Emphasis Humanity. Amanda L. Ryder. A in the for Sciences with an emphasis in social studies. Gage T. Moses. A A in History for Transfer.
Lauren Marie Tincher. AS in Administration of Justice for Transparency. Joy Lynn D. Fortley. AA in Early Childhood Education. AS in Early Childhood Education. Sciences, emphasis in social sciences, and A in liberal arts and 
social sciences for transfer. Adam S. Ibar. A. S. the Department of Science, A. S. of Liberal Arts and Sciences, Emphasis Natural Sciences, A. A. in the Liberal Arts and Sciences, Emphasis Social Sciences, and an A. A. in Psychology. Will all the graduates please rise? You may now move your tassels from the right side of your cap to the left. <laughs> Graduates, when you received your diploma, you also received a rose. This rose is for you to give as a gift of recognition to a family member, friend, or member of their support through your career. Now please turn turn towards the audience and remain standing. Ladies and gentlemen, it is with great pride that I present the class of 2022. administration, faculty, and graduates have left the stadium. Immediately following the recessional, we invite you to join us in the tent to your left, in the tent right over there, where light refreshments will be served. Please stay and meet the graduates, friends, faculty, and staff. Thank you. 